What's up, everybody? The Pitside Podcast is back here for episode 69. We've got two good guests for you this week, as every episode 69 must have. We've got Bob Evertson here with us and Isaac Salas, both members of the Coast to Coast Racing League. They've just joined up here recently. So if you stay tuned, we'll get started here in just a minute. Welcome to the Pit Side Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the Coast to Coast Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Here's your host, the ALA outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger, the Bassman, Craig. Yeah, so we're back here. It's been a uh, been a good week so far. I haven't personally yeah. had a chance to catch. We got a lot of stuff going on, so I haven't had a chance to see a lot of the racing. I was I was there Monday, but that was kind of the the last thing I've seen. So you'll have to kind of fill me in what's been going on. Uh, well, we've had some great racing right through the whole week. Uh, Hometown Heroes was uh, another great week. Uh, I, I'm I'm so enjoying listening to. Uh, Andy and and John out, you know, bleacher bums and Andy bitching that they won't they won't let him in the air conditioned booth. They make him sit outside. And I, I think from from uh, the feedback from the drivers, I think everybody's everybody's loving the delivery of of all our broadcasters. So uh, it, yeah, it's been good. And uh, uh, and then uh, Wednesday night, uh, the the veterans race. You know, we're not getting many veterans out, but that's fine. We don't have a lot of veterans. And they come out when they can. I think they had six guys, but they put on a show. Like it's 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 really really awesome uh, the racing that those guys have been putting on. And uh, and, and Andy Patton got a feature sticker as he was uh, at Fairbury. Is probably the last place he ever thought he'd get one. So I know he was uh, kind of like well maybe the opposite, but kind of Babe Ruth like he just had said something about now I'll never get one of those. And I think yeah, the next yeah. um, if it wasn't the next, it was almost the next race he ran. He ended up winning. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. So, uh, no, it's been it's been a great week, and um, that that's the thing I've uh, we'll talk about this maybe uh, on the podium picks at the end of the show. But we we got a great show, and uh, we don't want to hold it up too much. We got we got two great interviews uh, today with two of the the newer drivers. Both came in uh, uh, maybe in the fall. I'm, I'm not sure winter or fall, but that last season may have been their first season. Uh, up and coming drivers. Uh, well, they're there already. They're they're great drivers and uh, a couple of really good interviews here. So we should get into that. And uh, when we're done those, um, we'll have our uh, uh, pit side podium picks. And uh, there's another presentation there that uh, you don't want to miss. So uh, yeah, it's super cool. After. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, so what so, we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into the interviews now, and then yep. we'll come back and give you our podium pick. So we're going to talk to Isaac Salas first, and then we'll go right into our interview with Bob. And then, uh, then we'll be back here for podium picks here in just a few minutes. Yeah, enjoy these interviews. They're uh, they're really good. A lot of fun. So, we are here with one of the new hot shoes in the league. Uh, I've been setting it on fire in some of the divisions. Isaac Salas, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm coming off a coming off a pretty decent night with a 358 win here, so can't complain. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I watched that, and uh, you look pretty stout out there, buddy. So uh, congrats. But I, I haven't seen you out in the sprint cars too much. So when are you going to get over to the sprint cars? Uh, well, it's a, it's all schedule depending. Uh, sometimes, you know, since I, I, I am still in the in – the, it's C. I can't remember if it's – is it Raiders? I don't know. I don't yeah. know what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. But, but sometimes, like, that's my longest day is just because it's uh, after the weekend, so I can't make that first initial starting time. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Bro. Well, I, I, things change. You'll see me. I promise. Okay. I, used, I used to be pretty decent, but haven't so, been in the, the first discussion I had with uh, with Isaac was when he first came in the league, and, and it might have been the Knoxville Nationals or something. I, I can't remember where it was. And uh, he was, I think he was running third. I was running fourth. I was right on his butt. It was one of my better races. And uh, I tried to shame him that, you know, he had an old guy following him. He should be doing better than that. And then he says casually, well, I, this is only the second or third time I've been in this car. And I'm the like, oh, he crushed me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're from, is it Minot or Minot? Uh, it's Minot, actually. Minot. I missed that. So, Minot, North Dakota. How far from Crooks, South Dakota? And Joe Backus, how far away are you there? Oh, I was boy. looking on a map. Honestly, I'd probably have to say a good like six hours, seven hours. Oh, if you're driving. Pro okay. Property values are still intact then. 
Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I've always the the running joke I've got with uh, with Joe is um, you know I'm in Canada, the Great White North, and uh, you know I, I told Joe and he didn't realize he's 35 miles further north than I am. So like man, you're you're a few hundred miles further north than I am. So uh, and uh, and you work in the oil fields, is that right? Yes, sir. All all year round. Well, so we were just discussing before we came on air. He had a, a serious hand injury, and lost a couple of fingernails. So, how long before you could uh, get back in your rig with uh, that hand mauled up? Oh, I raced with just my right hand in that, through that entire season. I, I, I so basically, I used <laughs> this area of my of my my left hand to just kind of help whenever I needed help. But I I used straight right hand for I think, oh boy. A whole month worth of racing. <laughs> that's that's when Friday Night Lights was in their uh, first season, actually. That okay. We were doing, yeah. And so we were doing every Friday night. And is that how on. you? It, did you find our league through uh, Friday Night Lights? Uh, no, actually, I found it through um, Brian Lawson. Actually. Oh, Brian Lawson. And, so. Oh, he talked. He talked about we had. We had a league that we were running in, I believe, on the same night that you guys or that he was like super serious about. And so he'd like jump off, like, I gotta go run them. And so we're like, How's how how good is this league if he's like, I gotta go, I gotta go run them. And so we're like, Well, let's let's still try it out, you know, see if we have fun. And then I mean it's it's been a blast since I came in here. And I mean and Butch and everybody else has came with me. So it's been a lot of fun. So we're talking Venom Racing here, correct? Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, the, the new team, uh, you know, on, on the track with us. And uh, who, who in uh, who in your team is, is in our league right now? Um, so the main guys that you probably see uh, week in and week out would be uh, Brian Lawson, obviously. Me, um, Butch Baker, uh, Ryan LaFave. And he just joined oh, us yeah. three weeks ago. <laughs> um, and Ryan is actually Ryan is actually Butch's nephew. So he comes and hangs out with us. And then um, Charlie Weaver. Okay. And we okay. got so, so we got Charlie in here now. So yeah. So I saw those guys that I was watching, and it, interesting uh, is uh, sorry, is it Lefave? Mm-hmm. Is that, yeah. He is. Uh, he's leading. Um, I can't remember if it's the big blocks or whatever, but he hasn't won a race yet. But he's leading that division, so yeah. he's a. And these are all these are names that are all new to Preston and I because we don't, you know, we're doing the podcast. Or we don't often uh, get out on a Thursday night, so we've got all these new guys that we're trying to uh, catch up with, and, uh, and and great, great additions to the league for sure. Uh, you guys have been uh, been awesome, uh, and uh, so it, it's it's really good. So how, how long have you been in eye racing? Um, probably say a year and a half now. That's about it. That's all I got under my belt. It was, it was the first thing I ever got when I built my PC, actually. And okay, so tell us about your rig. What do you got? What are you running there? I couldn't tell you, to be honest with you, Roger. <laughs> well, no, I meant like what kind of wheel? Single oh, monitor, oh. VR. Well, I, I'm on single monitor. I mean, no, I'm trying to make the switch. I'm trying to make the switch to VR. I truly am. Um, but it just takes up a lot of time and I just need to get used to the feel. I got a reverb G2. Actually, it's such a beautiful freaking monitor or a beautiful, um, VR. It's like super crystal clear, but I just got to dial in the settings a little more just so it, it doesn't take such a strain on my eyes. Yeah. It'll, it'll mess you up. The best thing you can do when I got mine, I had that too. And it, it messed with me for a couple of weeks. So I just started, like, I'd do 10 minutes, you know, it really just almost training, like, even if I didn't feel like doing it, just trying to get my eyes used to it. Do 10 minutes, a couple of days, and then up to 15, and just kind of try to keep going a little further, and eventually it won't bother you anymore. Okay, well, cool, yeah. Um, actually, Ryan uh, sent me some settings because he actually uses the reverb as well, and he's like, well, try this, you know, might work for you, might not, but this is what he's been running, and I mean... They help with the graphics. I get a lot better frame rates, everything else like that. So it makes a, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And uh, what about wheel and pedals? What are you? Using? Um, honestly, just a Logitech G920. Um, she's not too crazy. I mean, it's just more of like a hobby for me than than true full blown rig. As much as I love for it to be a full a full blown rig, I, I find 
other ways to spend weird amounts of money. Yeah. So speaking <laughs> of, speaking of full bowling rigs, did you see our podcast from last week with Andy Pierce Fields rig? No, it was the oh. one podcast that I've missed in the like the last. I don't know. I think I've been watching ever since Brian got us in the league, and I've watched every single one with my breakfast when it comes out. That's the one that <laughs> and, I missed because I was on vacation, and I spaced it out through the week. And uh, and you managed to ha- hold your breakfast down after watching that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, you know, they're all available on C2CRN. You know, you can go back and watch. you got to go back and watch it because that rig is just, like, unbelievable. So, uh, okay. it's, uh, yeah, yeah. you'd need uh, oil man uh, wages to, uh, <laughs> to yeah. get a rig. I did just get a raise. All right, I'll I'll put it in consideration. <laughs> there you go. We'll get yeah. We'll get you in contact with Rob at Icon. We'll we know how uh, that yeah, yeah, we yeah. know where that raise will go. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, when the old lady comes and she like lets me finally have that other room just to myself, oh man, it's gonna be full blown. So, uh, I'm looking here. You've had uh, 28 races. This is the last two seasons, which I think that's about all you've been with us. Uh, and you've had. Uh, four victories there so you got like a 14 percent win percentage That's uh good pretty stout numbers and yeah. uh, uh incidents per lap of 0.12 so uh you know obviously uh one of uh, the cleaner drivers out there and uh it's uh that, that's cool man so uh where else are you racing uh you know Oh, um, honestly, uh, I've gotten kind of big into official series now I don't I I was never really into it but like I've kind of gotten really into the official series just like um and that like just the normal i racing official series and then also the uh oh what do they call it i don't remember what they call it but it happens every couple months um and dirt car esports puts it on and so a couple of us will go and run that and that's that's a lot of fun i can't remember if it's you or uh black bullet racing one of you is uh, you're all trying to get a higher. You're competing against each other for uh, power ratings. Is that your? That, team that's or? Black Bullet. That's that Black, Black Bullet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I that's... did. I did just look at the ratings in. I don't know what it was. I think it was like Dirt Street Stocks, and I was number one in Dirt Street Stocks, so that was pretty cool to see. I think that's wow. like my third time so far of being ranked number one. Yeah. Wow. And I think I did notice too. You you run a lot of Friday Night Lights too. I think. Yes. I. Yeah. That was, we got into Coast to Coast and we got into Friday Night Lights about give or take the same time. And it worked yeah. out perfect because those were the two days that I had like full blown. I could get home, you know, I might just grab a quick bite in between yeah. races or something. But that was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Joe runs a great show over there. That's yeah, for sure. so, he does. Uh, Absolutely. It's been Absolutely. great. But uh, I, I guess I got my question. Um, you know, uh, since you've been racing for about a year and a half, your, your greatest iRacing memory. Oh man, Mike, honestly, I'm going to have to put tonight's 350 race up there just for the simple reason of like, it was so clean, but like, it was some of the hardest racing I've ever done. Like, I know that it was, it was victory on the high side behind me and there was Brandon Templeton coming up on the bottom. And I was just like, you got two laps. It's a it's it's a green white checker basically you got it and then it was like it was such a great battle between the three of us, but if I had to choose like my favorite, like full blown moment, um, probably winning the two out of three championships in Friday Night Lights that was a lot of fun, um, and then I think the triple crown or whatever yeah it was triple crown of that, and then. When Venom took one, two, three, actually, we had we had a race in Friday Night Lights where we took first, second, and third. And for some reason, I I, I think I have more fun watching the guys do good than I even do. Like, we'll be in the middle of the race, and I'll be like talking to them, and they're like, "Can you stop? I'm trying. I'm, I'm in a battle. I'm like, I just want to know how you're doing." <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm... actually, he he said that in an interview. Sorry, uh, early mm. tonight about. Uh... I think it was, uh, you were talking the other way around where, you know, your other guys were uh, cheering you on during the race, even though they were battling at the back somewhere. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's great. That, it's great having the team concept. That's for sure. It, it was. Um, when I met these guys, I was, I was fresh. I'll tell you what, I was pretty fresh. I was a little, I was a little nervous. I wasn't too good. Um, probably like a mid pack kind of guy. And these guys are like, nah, we got that. And so like, we kind of, 
we kind of learn together. We kind of, you know, practice together. We kind of make time to help each other. And I think just in that itself has made iRacing way more fun and way more yep. honestly, like the community sense of iRacing, I think is yes. just so much fun. Everything from our discord to your guys' lead to just even like the guys that recognize your name, they're like, oh, hey, Isaac. And you're, you're like, it's a Friday night at like nine in the nine at night. And I was like, how do you know me? That's one yeah. of my favorite things is with the community that's grown. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So, so I'll have to ask you my question too. And I, and I always preface this by saying it doesn't mean that it's necessarily somebody you don't get along with. It might be somebody you find yourself on track with all the time. But who is your biggest rival in the Coast to Coast Racing League? Oh, man, for a while, you know, honestly, even if you count Friday Night Lights and every other, every sure. every time I'm in a sprint car session, every time I'm in the 358s, uh, and especially Friday Night Lights, Brandon Templeton always finds me, always <laughs> finds me. It's pretty interesting. I think a lot of guys would say Brandon Templeton. I, maybe it's, he runs a lot of our races. But I, I kind of feel the same way. I feel like you know, we we you and I don't run into each other a whole lot. But when we when I'm in a session and Brandon Templeton's in there, for some reason, I feel like I'm always around him too. So I think it's a pretty it's, good pick. It, it's a lot of fun because sometimes I'll be like, man, I was like, this is not my night, and I'm running like 13th, and I look on the little relative, and I'm like, is that Brandon? Look, what 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 in the world? And then sometimes I'll be like, man, I feel really confident right now, and I'll look over and. And Brandon's passing me on the inside. I'm like, what? Where did that? Where did that come from? I don't even understand. How are you always around me? So it's a lot of fun. I mean, I really do enjoy racing. Yeah, he's a clean driver yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the best part, honestly, like I know going back to this whole community thing that we just talked about, like if you, if I can go through our little Discord that we made, and I have so many people just from the league that came and just joined our Discord. Just to hang out like not even as in a race wise it was just like we got along on track we got along you know before the race so we like we talked like i talked to brian dickens uh nicholas vickery has helped me out in sprint cars because i was yeah. not like when we did our when you when we did that whole um stephen king foundation event yeah, yeah. i was terrified I, I had i was like i haven't set foot in a 360 at cedar lake in my life and I took, I think I took third or fourth or whatever it was. And for, and Brandon passed me, by the way, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, and I was like, Nick, I was like, we're going into this and I have no clue what I did, but I need some help. <laughs> I need some help. So, I mean, and it's just, it's just awesome that you can find those kind of people just yeah. in such as like. I wouldn't say it like a safe environment because I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like, like such a carefree zone where everyone's like, "Oh yeah, here, let me help you." This yeah. is what I do, at least. Yeah, and that's it's been awesome. I mean, and, yeah, uh, and that's what formed the the racing school, really. But yeah, yeah, and uh, you're gonna be excited, you know. Uh, our next charity event's coming up, and it's three fifty eight in big blocks, so it's right down your alley. So we'll be looking for you up uh, near that podium, buddy, and uh, uh, see if you can uh, pull a couple off. Well, I'm going to try, you know, like, I think I'll have to start practicing a little more, to be honest with you, because that 358 race, I had run a couple of laps, you know, before whatever, was not feeling very confident in myself, to be honest with you. When we got to that big block race tonight, those, like, you have the little time stamp on the, on there to say, you know, what's your fastest time? And that baby was blank. And I'm like, well, we'll give it a shot. So, I mean, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to put some laps in just well, to get it, comfortable. And, and just so you've heard it here first, uh, all those races will be at Charlotte. So, uh, oh, you know, so I'll it's, tell you uh, what, I don't know if you guys watched last week's uh, 350. Was it 350? I believe it was. I accidentally got in the Pomerlo, and I wanted to apologize so bad, but I like it went through Discord and it just went, no. Nah. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, I tried. <laughs> but I ended up having to start 19th, and I drove up to third, and I was all happy that I was up there, and then I climbed the wall. And I was like, okay, let's move on to next week. Yeah. But I love Charlotte. I've, I've gotten a lot of a lot of great uh, great memories of Charlotte. Well, hopefully you have some, uh, some more, and uh, 
want to say I want to thank you for coming on and uh, just uh, being part of our league and uh, look forward to seeing you on the track and uh, having a few more chats in Discord when you drop by. So uh, I, oh, of course. I mean, sometimes I'll drop into Discord chats with you even when I'm at work just to hang out with you. So I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, it, um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, it's been great, man. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on and we'll see you on the track. Okay. Well, thanks, sir. Take care. And we're here with Bob Evertson. Uh, this is our third attempt at trying to do this. So <laughs> a couple of uh, outtakes that you might see at the end. But uh, anyways, uh, good to see you, Bob. And uh, just, uh, you know, welcome to the league. I know you've been around, I think, two seasons now. And yes, uh, uh, it's been a great addition. And uh, you had quite a night last Monday night. Uh, take us through that. Uh, well, uh, I think luck might play into it a little bit, but um, that the new track model really, I guess, played to my strengths a little bit that night. Um, I don't know. In my opinion, we could run the whole race over with the same exact guys, and it would be a different result. So it's kind of one of every dog has his day type of things. I felt really comfortable Monday for some reason and was able to come away with a couple of victories with a little bit of luck as the shirt would just, imply. Were you wearing that shirt Monday night? I was not. And you would have thought I was because I believe it was uh Steven Goldner uh, got into a lap car and that really opened up the door for me and kind of is what sealed the deal. So luck plays yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And it always will, you know, that's, we, we talk about it all the time. The, the competition level and it is so even that you have to play your cards right and make sure you're there to, you know, to, to have that luck play into your hands when you need it to. Cause it's, you know, you're, sure. you know, we've got some guys, Steven Goldner, one of them that's going to always mm -hmm. be towards the front, but you know, sometimes he needs that lucky break to win too. So it's, I think that's the, that's here to stay for sure. Yeah, I think once you get to, uh, especially in the Renegades, being the, the highest tier of sprint cars that you guys run, it's pretty much who makes the mistakes and who doesn't. Yep, I'd agree and, with that. Yep. And anyone I've been can make making a plenty. mistake at any time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I made a couple of that race when I tapped the wall, and I was just, for some reason, I was able to stay calm, uh, just let off a little bit, straighten her up, and keep going. Um, I've had a little... A few too many times where you get it in your head as a racer, you got to make up for your lost time and it ends up hurting you in the end. Yep. So yeah. I think staying calm is just a big part of any success. And I, I would think a lot of guys who are up front a lot, it's just staying calm. Yeah, I so, think you're right. But that, that brings up a good question. Like, uh, were you were you nervous at all going up into the Renegades? I've heard that from guys. I know myself. The first time I got I transferred up, it's kind of like I don't want to screw up at all here. You know, these guys are good, and I'm in a different league, and 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 and, and it becomes obvious too just how much better those guys are when you're when you're racing amongst them. But were were, were you nervous at all uh, racing with them, or um, just because I'm always an honest person, I I, I wasn't. Um, I've raced with a lot of those guys before, and. Um, I felt I felt really confident. I mean, it was all down to ability, and if that night was going to go your way, so, yeah, yeah. No, I was. It, I came off a lot of momentum just taking a win in the Rebels, though, which gave me, I yeah. think, a little bit of a advantage over the other guys because yeah. I just ran, you know, same through track. the through the heat races and practices, yeah. and I had a little more time than they did, so that probably played into my hands a little more well and and it's one thing i've noticed and and, and not to take anything away from because you you earned your victory i think you're selling yourself a little short but i think this past week I, i've been noticing because i i will ghost race the rebels races pretty frequently just to get some mm -hmm. racing laps in um and and to me the, in the pet like the first couple of weeks of the season the two tracks would end up being very different I don't know mm -hmm. if it's, you know, generated temperatures are very different or humidity or whatever. I, I, I don't know enough about it to know. They seem very right. different. This past week, I thought they seemed very similar. And some of that's probably just being a smaller track. The track's going to wear in very similarly, too. But may, that may, do you think that maybe, you know, kind of helped you when you got to Renegades, too? Um, I think a lot of that plays into Fairbury's uh, top side dominant track. Yeah. And it's kind of like if you're worth to if you'll risk it for the biscuit, a lot of times it'll pay off 
or it won't. And it was one night where it didn't go south. So yeah, right. and I mean, I think we all saw a lot of guys that you wouldn't normally expect to be getting into the wall. You know, it sneaks up on you quick, and um, yeah, I don't know if you're if you're just lucky enough and focused enough to not make a mistake. It's what it all comes down to, I think, is just minimizing mistakes. Yeah, yeah. and and you got to go all out, you know. So it's those mistakes sometimes occur a little bit more frequently because you you really just got to be hammered down all the time. Yeah, I was a little more conservative in the uh, rebels, I think. Yeah, but when I got to the renegades, I knew I was racing against, you know, a very high caliber of drivers. I mean, I'll, most of the guys in there are really solid, and any of them can win every you know any given monday so i think that gave me a little extra drive to focus a little harder and just like i said make sure i didn't make the mistakes because i don't remember where i qualified but i don't think it was particularly well but you know within racing qualifying doesn't matter too much it's how you finish the race so yeah uh, where are you from I, I meant to check that out I, I i checked earlier in the week uh Whereabouts are you from? Uh, I live in Kernersville, North Carolina, which is in between Greensboro and Winston-Salem. And I'm originally from upstate New York, just outside of Syracuse. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, how old were you when you moved? I moved from New York in 90s. I was seven years old. Oh, okay. So you wouldn't have been a exposed that much to like the dirt mods and all that sort of stuff oh yeah i was then. plenty exposed yeah we oh, went yeah. to um ever since i was a young kid i went to the uh, new york state fairgrounds and uh rolling wheels speedway all the time mm -hmm. and, which i hope they put rolling wheels and high racing it's a five eights dirt oval high banked it's the fastest dirt track like on earth it's crazy that's awesome do you get so, you get to you get to many races down in kernersville I try to go to the uh, championships in uh, Charlotte because it's about an hour and a half from me. Yeah. And I generally go to the drag races. And I used to go to the Coca-Cola 600 every year, but having little ones kind of slows some things down. Yeah, that'll For be sure. that to you. But that's, once that's he's of age, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Can't that's wait. That's awesome. So uh, uh, it'll be interesting then uh, if you're not that far from Charlotte and that, uh, you know, we've got uh, our um, – our charity event uh it's going to be the you know dirt week and uh, it'll be all out of uh the you know dirt track at charlotte so it's a familiar hmm. territory for you and oh, I, thank, I, thanks I noticed, for the pressure <laughs> yeah yeah there you go I, and i noticed uh you know in the last two seasons since you've been here you've been in like 47 different races so i know you run the sprints and, and i see you around i just can't remember what divisions what do, what have you been running um, generally I ran the hometown heroes when they were yeah. on Wednesday nights and I would run, I started when there was a, actually a D series, but right. since we've gone ABC, we'll just yeah. say from there. Um, and then this season I decided I wanted to try a lot of wingless. So I'm running your, uh, wingless Wednesdays, kind of having fun with that, trying to learn something a little different. Yeah, yeah, those are crazy. Both those cars, the midgets and the three sixties, are a whole different beast to, yeah, to run. A lot if of throttle can, control. You can take a really fast sprint car guy and put him in there, and he's not going to be fast. No, <laughs> uh, I, I've been um, really impressed at the quality of driving, actually, for you know cars that are so out of control type. You know, you're driving them a little oh, right. bit out of control. Uh, that the the racing has been been really really good. So. Uh, uh, it's been a very entertaining, uh, more more entertaining for me to watch because uh, when I get in there, I'm a weapon, and I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so that's I, right, that's yeah, right, yeah. So it's uh, but it's it, the it, mindset you need to have there, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish so, I went in that cocky, but I did not. But yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think Black Bullet, you you guys are running your own league now, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, is that on? Is that on Tuesday nights? Yeah, it's uh, Tuesday nights at, um, I mean, every time I say it's going to be Eastern, but yeah. 8, 8 p.m. for me is the uh, 410s open setups. And then following that, I believe it's at 930 is the big block modifieds. Okay, very good. So so this season you're running uh, 
uh, are, you're running once the midgets, and are you running the four tens as well after the midgets? Yes, I have been. Okay, that's open cool. setups are a little weird for me, but so uh, everyone's got to run it. What about the dirt mods? You've been running dirt mods. I you know, I, like... I never really got into the big body cars. I guess when I grew up racing dirt. To me, the premiere was always being in a sprint car. Yeah, me too. Um, yep. And for my birthday, a, a few years back, my father bought me a driving experience in a 410. <laughs> no and, kidding. And uh, I got to finally live that dream out, which was really cool. And had, I can tell you, my arms felt like they were going to fall off after 20 laps. Like... It's probably because I was so damn tense, but. So well, what what track did you do that at? It was in um, about an hour out of Charlotte in Fuquay called Carolina Speedway. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've heard of that. Okay. Yeah, they had a driving experience there, so I just went and gave it help for, for a little while. That's so, awesome. So take us through that. Like, what what is there? A bunch of, is there some classroom instruction or something, or they just throw you in the car and go? It's kind of a throw you in the car and go type really? deal. There's a little bit of instruction ahead of time, mostly like safety measures and stuff. But um, the car is set up to be very safe, and they make the track incredibly dry to where it's almost like asphalt. So the people that are hesitant are going to drive it more so like an asphalt track. And then you have the kamikazes like me that won't. <laughs> I mean, it was it was quick enough to set it sideways? Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, I did have someone in my ear. He was a professional spotter for a lot of guys and trains a lot of sprint car drivers. I wish I could remember his name, but it, it blanks me right now. But um, it was really cool having him and me in my ear telling me like when I was getting faster and like telling me to hold it down a little bit longer. You're setting great lap times or whatever. So I'm like, cool. I might come out of here with freaking sprint car ride <laughs> and uh the same guy a week after i drove uh coached travis pastrana around the same track as like a special event and travis pastrana is one of my heroes because i grew up racing motocross when i was a kid and man that dude's a legend yeah that's wild, man. That's that's awesome. I, I'm gonna have to be doing some googling after we're done here. Yeah, yeah. And if yeah, you yeah. got pictures, post them in the lounge, man. That, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, please. Oh yeah, I'll try to find. It was actually a wingless. I went to run a winged one, but I had a fuel leak before I went out, so I had to jump in the wingless. And the guy there is like, "Don't worry, this one's faster anyway." So I'm like, "Cool, man. Let's go." <laughs> that's impressive. Wow. That's wild. oh, it's a lot. I mean, there's. I would say for the price, it's incredibly affordable if you want to live out a dream like that. Just to just to drive one of those cars is amazing. Yeah, Oops. for sure. <laughs> so what, what? So what? Uh, what kind of price were we talking about for that? Uh, U.S. dollars, I'd say. My experience. I think my dad bought me a package where i got 10 laps and then he added 10 laps on top of it and it came out to be somewhere around 500 dollars. wow wow that's not bad at all yeah, so maybe bad, 250 to 300 to go rip around a sprint car i mean to me sure yeah <laughs> like the, no, the richard absolutely. petty driving experience which doesn't interest me much anyway because it's yeah. on asphalt is like 500 dollars, and you can put your right hand on the on the quarter panel <laughs> yeah right. yeah i've done that before too which is pretty cool yeah uh, i did i did a ride along when i was a kid i think i was 13 years old and i remember they give i have a plaque somewhere i don't i don't know if i have it or one of my parents but um i think we clocked 189 miles an hour on the back straightaway and a kid growing up in dirt racing always aspiring to be like a nascar driver yeah yeah which, which is kind of weird, right? But I was also, I, I felt the pinnacle would be racing a sprint car. But everyone's trying to get to that NASCAR level. And in iRacing, I've, I've run a NASCAR maybe a couple of times. It just never really hooked me the way Dirt did just because it's so diverse and complicated, I guess. I'm not taking anything away from the asphalt. but No, no it's, it's fine. More, you can. It doesn't yeah, bother us at yeah. all. 
I mean, it's their I, own asphalt. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, it's so much more intense. I think that's the, you know, I, I've been enjoying our NASCAR series that we run in the, you know, the afternoons and Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly because an older guy, I can keep, you know, with the draft, I, I can, it's, it's more of a strategy chess game. And, uh, right. you know, it's a long wait where, you know, the dirt stuff is intense. You get and you go, right? Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. It, There's not many oh, laps yeah. to make it happen, huh? No, no. And, uh, it's funny as you were talking about all of that uh kyle larson comes to mind you know he, he reached the pinnacle right. of nascar but i think he'd still rather be in a dirt car so it's, oh yeah uh, well he definitely uh, yeah. shows his roots i've been a huge fan of his for yeah. a long time and as my koozie would say uh i worked for terry labani chevrolet i'm a gm master tech so i work on cars and uh i've met terry labani I actually knew him pretty well. He was on my company softball team. <laughs> um, I got cool. to race Corvettes with him. And unfortunately, right before I left uh, to go to another Chevrolet dealership, in our uh, parts department, he had a remake Winston Cup trophy. And I was, ha I was supposed to have a grudge match with him in go-karts at GoPro Motorplex. <laughs> and the win and if I beat him, which I would have beat him, I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm a beast in a go kart, but uh, I'd get to take it home for a week. And he was like, "Let's do it," <laughs> and, and I was like, "Cool, dude. Like, let's do it." And uh, I, don't know. Every, I, I go up there every once in a while, and I've talked to him. So Terry Labonte is really a phenomenal guy. I don't know how much people actually know about him. Um. I've been, when I went to race Corvettes, it was with uh, him and his brother. And I would take Terry over his brother, in my personal opinion. He's just a really humble, down to earth guy. And he can drive on an asphalt course. It's amazing. Yeah. So smooth. <laughs> what were you doing racing Corvettes? Uh, well, opportunity that was given to me, it was at VIR, Virginia International <laughs> Raceway. Very familiar with that. Uh, working at Chevrolet, they would have track days, and Chevrolet would let a uh, dealership take a few cars from their inventory. So we took a few Corvettes, a couple Camaros, and then they would pay for all the maintenance after, you, like, obviously tires and brakes after you get back from a racetrack. So I had a Camaro at the time. I went up there. We brought a bunch of company vehicles. And then obviously Terry being the name on our dealership, uh, he was there. And dude, there were so many people like that were there. They were like, "Hey man, will you come drive my car around with me in it?" And he's like, <laughs> "Sure." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit, we sh we set the brakes on fire on a Z06. It was amazing, <laughs> except for the guy in the car. I, I'm pretty sure he soiled himself. <laughs> hey, so it, when when Chevy does that, is it like just kind of a reward for you know you know you're buying so many cars, or are they actually like using that as a testing period? Uh, to my knowledge, a lot of it is like if you buy a performance car from Chevrolet, i.e., a Camaro or a Corvette, in the local area, they'll find a r local racetrack and host a track day where they run out the track, and you can kind of put what you bought through the paces it was built for oh okay if that makes sense like yeah, they, yeah. We, we make or we allow all our customers to come out but the cool part of being a dealership employee is i got to beat the hell out of a car that i didn't own right so yeah which was yeah. great <laughs> wow that's awesome man but yeah a lot of fun i mean i've done a lot in racing in my career i guess it's you just don't turn on the tv and hear my name <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Didn't, i didn't get that good yeah, so uh, so getting back to the i racing, uh, mm -hmm. like, what do you what do you run? What kind of equipment do you have? Um, I have a Simitech K2 cockpit with an NRG seat. I'm running a Thrustmaster 300 base with a rally wheel, and I run a Samsung VR headset. Very and cool. How long have you been doing the VR? Well, I guess compared to how long you've been i racing, did you start in i racing with VR? Um, no. 
but it wasn't long after that I switched to VR. I started August of last year. It was the first time I downloaded iRacing and started doing it. And then I was probably on it for about a month, and I had an Oculus Quest sitting around. I'm like, let me try this. So I tried it once, and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. So uh, through Facebook Marketplace and stuff, I started upgrading my equipment, and a guy was selling a wheel and cockpit with a VR headset. So I'm like, all right, I'm buying that. Let's go. Yeah, I, I, I asked you back. that. I asked you that question specifically because, and it's funny you saying you started in August. You, you and we interviewed Isaac Salas a little bit ago, mm-hmm. and like y'all started iRacing about the same time, joined the league really about the same time. And I thought you were on the same team when we were starting for some reason, which I had mixed up. But it's y'all are like pretty much have an identical story. And he's just getting started in VR too. And so I was I was asking because I know I I, I raced for a very long time before I switched because I started a long time ago are you on vr now yeah i'm on vr now i have been for the last i guess year and a half or so so i didn't know if there would be a little difference in the adjustment to using the vr headset if you've been i racing for a while or if you're a little bit fresher i just just was a little bit curious yeah i guess since i switched to it so early i wouldn't be able to make a judge i, I can guarantee you if you put me in the same race on a computer screen i'm a failure no oh, so, me too i tried I'm just so and used i can't to looking do it. around so yeah, the field of view is just unmatched, and I guess the immersion comes in with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, just being able, like, if, if you're in fear that there's someone on the outside, you can plant. I mean, I, I definitely don't turn my head and look, because if I do that, I hit the wall. But Yeah, you start to ease up a little bit. But a lot of it, uh, I mean, I've learned so much from, like, my teammates and just even people are my teammates that have been willing to teach me some things. And a lot of it's about adjustments, tweaks, everything needs to fit to you. Yeah. Like uh, how true. I have my audio, like I, I can race. I do have a rear view mirror in my car, but the only way for me to see it is to look way up. Mm-hmm. I don't want it distracting me. I normally use it for like restarts and stuff like that to make sure I'm not about to get killed after a caution or you know something like that because but uh being able just to hear where cars are around you i mean the way i have my vr set up like if i tilt my head to the right a little bit it gets louder in the right ear and yep what have you like i think that helped me uh tremendously just learning to listen more than just look yeah i've heard that from uh, more than a few guys that when especially when they get rid of the mirror that uh they're, they do pay more attention to the to the sound. Yeah, and it makes for sure. A better yeah. I think, yeah. uh, I don't know, I was interviewed not too long ago. I think it might have been last season when uh, me and Blake were going head-to-head. And he ran me down the bottom side, and I committed to the top. And I know there's a lot of people that would run a mirror and be like, he's catching me down low, let's you know, cut him off, go down low. But I'm more of, all right, let's see who can make our line faster and he bested me that day, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, Blake has a habit yeah. of doing that to people. Yeah, exactly. especially down low. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. hate you, Blake. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I don't actually hate you, Blake, but I hate you, Blake. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I hear I mean, you. <laughs> I can rip the lip, but when it comes to yeah. going low, I'm clueless. Oops, so, sorry. so that probably leads well into my yeah. question that, that I, I asked all our guests. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I, and I always preface this by saying it doesn't have to be somebody you don't get along with. It can be, but it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be. It might just be somebody you find yourself on the track, you know, pretty frequently. So who do you say is your biggest rival in the Coast to Coast Racing League? Biggest rival? I guess everybody but me. <laughs> that's kind of, I mean. I kinda nah, that's a cop out. Come on. <laughs> I mean, everyone's my rival. I want to beat them all, but uh, yeah, I know true. last season, I think I didn't have any bad blood with them, and, you know, we exchanged good words, but Vickery was, uh, me and him were always just right there for a while. Yep. So, I would put that to last season. This season's so fresh. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, it might be Ross Carinta that 
I might be battling with for a while here. If I'm lucky enough, we're going to find out. Yeah, yeah, those are those are two good names to be mixed or, mixed up with. So, uh, I mean, they're both yeah, well, pretty I guess quick I'm guys. surrounded by good company, so yeah, at least that's... if I can finish oh, behind yeah. them, I'm not too, you know, too, yeah. too down on myself. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I meant to say uh, Roger Craig. <laughs> I don't even see you on the track, buddy, unless you're <laughs> laughing me. I was going to say, lap cars can be rivals, too. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, lap cars can be rivals. Yeah, if you ask Stephen from, uh, from, <laughs> from earlier Monday. this week, he would, he would probably <laughs> agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, greatest memory in iRacing has been, a you know, you haven't been in it that long, but what was the, what's the hmm. best highlight that you've had? Uh, probably Monday. Yeah. Honestly. I, that, probably that's, Monday. That's a tough one to uh, top, I man. Guess. Uh, yeah, especially the the, the back to back. One one was the you know winning in the Renegades, but it was like that was back to back. You know, you you didn't right. come in like in P10 and transfer. You had you know. I'm going to technically wins. say back to back to back because the previous Monday I won in the Rebels. I didn't move up to the Renegades because I had committed to racing a wingless with a teammate, and then I came into the Rebels. This Monday, and then yeah. won that, and then the running. So, so I'm going with three in a row. Right? Yeah, wow, man, you're, you're on a streak. You, yeah, you're flying, man. Yeah, next week I'm finishing last. It's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Not yeah, so it uh, could happen. <laughs> anyways, uh, you know, want to thank you for coming on. You know, oh yeah, of course. One thank of the hot, me. one of the hottest young drivers we've got coming into the league. <laughs> that, that's what we were waiting for. All right, there you go. Send, it's, it's, bookmark it and uh, send sorry. it to the family. Yeah. Yeah, wait. nobody nobody knows what we're talking about, but we do. So well, yeah, wait. Yeah, <laughs> wait for the bloopers <laughs> real. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, it's it's a blast having you, buddy, and it's always great I seeing am. you on the track, even though you're at the other end, uh, you know, the uh, starting field that I am. But uh, not always. Uh, it, it's uh, it's good watching you on the uh, when I when I go back and watch the replays. <laughs> That's the only time I get to see you. <laughs> So it's uh, it's all good, and uh, again, congrats on a, on a great win, and uh, you know, and uh, appreciate it. Appreciate all, all you and and all your uh, Black Bullet Racing guys, uh, uh, you know, taking us up and, and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's all good. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, a lot of us that run it. I mean, we're we're happy to run it. You guys put on something awesome. I mean, I don't think there's anything else out there you can run every night for a ten dollar entry fee. It's it's yeah. kind of insane. Yeah. Yeah. How many feature stickers do you have? See, we were going to get to that point. I only got one last season. But uh, the way I understood it, you get one per season. No, one per division. So per division. So yeah. I should have two coming, right? So you got two you got two coming, buddy. Two in yeah. one week. Wait two till you see night. me in these wingless 360s. I'm going to get another. <laughs> there you <All> right. go. <laughs> I'm going to have to put put my buddy Terry Landis on that one, so I'll make yeah. sure you got some competition. Well, you know, he's not going to be there one week, so I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fair enough. <laughs> he can't run them all. God, I hope not. Jesus. He'll try. <laughs> yeah, no, those guys are so much more experienced in a wingless car. I'm just I'm trying to learn something new in – I think a lot that prepared me for Fairbury, you know, or my success Monday was running the wingless. It's probably Throttle true. Control is so important in wingless. It's so important. Yeah. 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 And that's what's kind of been tuning my ear to the sound of tire slip. If that makes sense. Cause I've been yeah. running yeah. mostly four tens here as of recent. And I might be good in a 360 at times, but I'm, I'm not there yet in a four ten. So. We're yeah, trying well, to get there. Yeah, it's, a lot of us can say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no doubt. It's a, so, uh, it's a lot of power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for coming on, buddy, and uh, congrats on the, you know, on, on the hot streak you got going there, and uh, look forward to seeing how you do this season. I think you're. Um, I was just looking at this. You're in, in sixth right now, but you went up ten spots in Rebels. So, mm. uh, but that's based on uh, you've been there two weeks. Everybody else has been there three. So uh, once the drop weeks start coming in. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're you're going to be uh, accounted for. So you're right in the hunt for sure. So uh, don't that tell Roger, matters. but I'm pulling for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I mean, that only comes into account if I can keep it going. That's but, right. Uh, consistency. Consistency. But, that is, yeah. That's what wins it. championships. So. That's right. It, it does. Not getting frustrated on one bad race. So. Yep. Well, if you do win the championship in Rebels, you've done something that last year's champion didn't do, and that's you, you want a feature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Who won but last season? I don't remember. I did. Preston. Preston with Holy sh- Well, congratulations, yeah. Preston. Thank you. I, I did it with one podium, no wins, and uh, I got a handful of fourths and fifths. I, I could not yeah. believe it. It was consistency. Well, it's exactly what you yeah. just said. Hey, it'll yeah. work. It wasn't a handful. It was like a ton of uh, fourths and fifths. So, uh, But, yeah, yeah, that just underlines the whole consistency thing. So, it sounds uh, like I got a new uh, rival, Roger. You got Kevin well, first. I think press. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Yeah. I'll, I'll be just, just for the record, I'll be pulling for you, Bob. <laughs> All right. Right. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for coming on, man. And uh, good luck on the track. And uh, it's, uh, it's been great talking to you and your experiences. Well, thanks for having me guys. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Absolutely. Okay. Take care. You as well. So th- those were a couple of really fun interviews. We we had a yeah. lot of laughs, even some behind the scenes, which I'm sure you guys will get backstories on at some point. But uh, yeah. with Bob, yeah, we had a, we had a lot of laughs. So a lot of fun with both those guys, and it's they've been both very positive additions to the league. They're both very fast. They're both clean, and they they both enjoy palling around. And I think that was obvious in the interviews. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. I, I've noticed that a lot about a lot of the guys coming in the league now are like. It's fresh air, and it's uh, you know that they're they're really enjoying the league for you know uh, how clean it is. I've heard a few comments about that lately, um, and they're a great addition. You know, it's, it's like both, both those guys and the teams that they brought. You know, it's been it's been good. Um, so uh, it's, well, yeah, we had we had a lot of laughs today. Well, and you know, I think they're, they're we've both seen that they're both heavily involved in, or at least parts of their team are running Friday Night Lights. And so they both came in about the time that was starting. And I think Joe Halter definitely deserves a little bit of credit for that, at least. Oh, yeah. Because, yes. I, you know, I don't get to run every week. But when I do, he keeps it light. You know, if things are, it's fun. You know, it, it, they, a lot of times the early races weren't for points and guys were still showing up in droves. And those some of those guys trickle into our league. And I think they come in with a very positive attitude because of what they've experienced yeah. with Joe and that synergy yeah. that we have between the yeah. two two groups. Yeah, Joe sets the table for it, you know, and uh, it, yeah, it, it's been it's been awesome. So I uh, can't say enough. Uh, uh, you know, the, the um, we do our podium picks, but this wasn't sort of on the list, and we mentioned it last week. But I got to keep mentioning it. Our broadcasters are just absolutely spectacular. Yeah, I'm getting so much good feedback on on all three of them, uh, all three all the three broadcast teams. I'll call them teams. But, uh, you know, we talked last week about how guys pick up the ball. It happened again tonight. Marty couldn't make, uh, this is Thursday night, and Marty couldn't make the first race. This is like, you know, like only hours before the race. And Andy, could you pick it up? And, and Andy responded within about 15 seconds. It was like freaky. And yeah, yeah, sure. You know, like I got it. Uh, so we, we talked about them doing that last week. And. Uh, the other thing that's happening now is, um, and, and you're not even aware of this. Oh, no, you are because you were in the thread. But uh, we're setting up a workshop uh, where yeah. they're, they're going to start to, you know, they're share. Well, they do share their knowledge. And, you know, in fairness, it's mostly sharing Marty's knowledge because he's the, you know, he's got the background and everything. But these guys are all committed. And, uh, you know, they, they put their money, a lot of money into, you know, the, their production to make it good quality. And it's continuous improvement, and we're seeing that week after week. But, you know, it's just uh, all the deliveries, they're so unique. Uh, I, I, I just can't say enough. It's just uh, the other very cool thing is, uh, and I'm going to be away this coming week. Uh, when you see this podcast, I'm up north for a week, so I'm kind of out of touch. But I can watch a broadcast every night. Like, I can watch, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's true. Thursday, Friday. I watch the – in fact, I, I watch them a lot of times if I'm not racing – I'm upstairs with my wife, but we'll have something on TV. And I, in the corner, I'll have the race on, and I'll be, you know, when it's feature time or whatever, I'll, I'll pay attention or listen to the interviews. And it's, uh, it, it's awesome what these guys are doing for us. So uh, just a big tip of the hat to those guys for I, sure. I mean, they they've really made our own little version of you know like flow racing. Like we you've just got that. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> racing all the time, and that's that's what drew me to it originally. Is you know any given night you're going to be able to find some sprint car racing on, and I feel like that yeah. we've kind of done that for ourselves too. Yeah, or or you can go back, you know, like if right if exactly. Week, yeah, it's uh, it's just there's so much of it. I know Joe said he had a great 305 race two weeks ago, and. Uh, and it's in the back of my head to watch it, but like it's just you know it's tr- finding the time because every night I'm watching races. So yeah, it's uh it's been good. Just I just want to I can't say enough about those guys. And I'm I'm sure everybody watching 
appreciates what they're doing too and uh uh, it's just uh, it, it, it's it's a wonderful thing. It's it, there's a community of broadcasters amongst our community of, our, you know, the racing league, and uh, so I, yeah, it's been good. But anyways, let's get to the podium. You know, we got our our top three picks, uh, the pit side, uh, uh, the pit, podium, pit, pit side, side podium picks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah pit side podium picks. So number three um, that we want to talk about is just that uh, we talked about a little bit last week was uh, dirt week is coming. It's only a few weeks away. Uh, we're, you know, getting into the whole looking for sponsors. Anybody interested in, in sponsoring? It's uh, all proceeds uh, after expenses will go to uh, the veterans, uh, both in Canada and the U.S. And um, I can't 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 be a, a more worthy cause than that. That's for sure. So uh, the, the the format that uh, uh, Dean Reynolds has set up for Dirt Week, it's going to be. Uh, it's there. It, it's in the schedule, so you can check it out. Uh, uh, just the, the basic format, but we'll have more details coming. Uh, that's that's sort of one of my plans. Uh, I'm up north, and uh, I'll, I'll be uh, updating the website a bit and uh, and getting a lot of the background ready for that. So uh, that's coming. So just uh, stay tuned for that. And then uh, number two. Uh, I guess it, to go along that line is finally got the standings up to date. So um, most of the standings were there from last season, uh, but we, with the new divisions, uh, they were there in Sim Race Hub, but they weren't on our website. Uh, so I finally got all the links to that. But a, a huge shout, a huge shout out to uh, Brian Lawson, um, Magnum Race Design. Uh, give him a plug here. Uh, he's worked tirelessly. Like we got 22 division logos yeah. and, uh, and the, and the four nights, uh, uh, plus Joe's. Cause I think he did, he's doing logos for Joe too. Yeah. He's doing. But if there's anybody that can appreciate the work that he's put into that would be you. Absolutely. And, and I can tell you a hundred percent that for one, they have a great consistent look. And yep. and I um, mean that's that's a lot of what makes them look so great is y you can tell it's all part of one package and it really brings yep. our league together when you have a consistent uh, a consistent way things look. But I can tell you I don't think I've ever done in in any before any given season twenty two division logos. We've no, never no, updated no. them all at one time. No. And I mean we've done big amounts, but nothing like that. Yep. And I I mean yep. he put a ton of effort into that and he knocked it out of the park. He did a great job. He did. And and like I say, you you would know better than anybody. Now, number one, all the work involved in that. But then number two, dealing with me. You know, it's just, Oh it I mean know. I I wasn't gonna say anything, but <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh you know he's he's been really great just just as you were about tolerating me and my requests and oh uh could you move this or could you add this and uh, so uh, well, it, it, and and you know what I'll say this in his favor, and and I guess a little bit in mine and the rap guys in our league too. You know that's if you're going to do this and and at least semi professionally, you have to be able to take criticisms and accept changes, and that's what makes the guys that do really good jobs. That's what helps them do that work, and and so you yeah. know that's it's important part of, of of making things look good. Yep, yep, for sure. And we've been blessed with uh, with great rap. Designer it's very true. I, I think yeah. we have a higher rap guy per capita than any other league in on I racing. Yes, and probably, probably higher per capita of guys, you know, buying wraps from the different guys. Probably true too. It's uh, because of quality. Everybody sees the quality out there. So yeah. It's, uh, it's it's been uh, awesome. So uh, uh, that's been great. Um, number one, the number one on the podium this week. Do you want to bring it in? Yeah, this sure. Is awesome. So we've, everybody, you got to stick around and watch this. Yeah, you're going to want to see this. We've got a very special presentation. Um, in this is for our King of the Wing event that we ran. It's our it was the last charity event. So not only do we have a uh, the winner, obviously, yep. the uh, the local uh, town mayor, and yep. our sponsor. Yep are all in or our title sponsor for the event. We had title lots of great sponsors. Sponsor. But the title sponsor are all there to present the winner's trophy. So we're going to turn it over to those guys now. Um, but we're going to be back here next week for episode 70. We appreciate so much you guys tuning Seven. in each week. I know. You're getting close to my age. Yeah, well, it won't be long. We're gonna we're gonna surpass it. So yeah. it's 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 been a great ride, and you know, I, I we have a, a steady viewership every single week, and we appreciate every one of you 
So uh, make sure you tune in next week and don't miss the presentation here in just a second. Thanks, yeah, guys. Sure. And good luck, everybody, next week. And, uh, you know, one last guy in your way and drive safe. How you doing, everyone? I'm Steve Zuxler. I'm the mayor here in Clarence, Iowa. And we're lucky enough today to have along with, with me today is uh, the title sponsor for the Cable Wings uh, Prairie event, which took place in February. And now I'd like to turn it over to Steve Flower, the CEO of Yes. Well, on behalf of our farm management and all our farm partners, I would like to present this award to Blake Chapman for the King of Wings. The dancer is going to job well done, and he had to work at it pretty hard to get it done because I was watching it. And uh, I'd also like to put a word out to Rip the Designs. This is a very nice little piece here, and it's all good. Yes, of course. Uh, first and foremost, i got to thank Rip the Designs. Uh, he spent a lot of time and effort on this. I can tell it turned out really, really well. I uh, like it a lot so far. Um, of course, I got to thank everybody for uh, running the league, putting in the money, and uh, raising over $2,000, I believe it was, for the Steve King Foundation. And of course, big shout out to Coast to Coast for putting that on. And I got to thank Mauer Farm Management, the title sponsor, and of course, all the other sponsors that donated money and gave away wraps and money and all that stuff. So, great community and proud of success this board. Three, two, one. And we're here with another new guy in a, in the league, relatively new, uh, another hot shoe that we've got. One of these, another one of these hot young guys. Another one of these hot young guys. And we're here with. Uh... <laughs> 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 Two, one. I just realized we didn't talk about who was going to bring that in. Sorry.